Hello, in this video, I will show how you can create many checkboxes and analyze them using Excel VBA and the ActiveX controls. We consider a company with 50 employees. One of the company rules states that all employees should receive three trainings within the first half year of their employment. We use checkboxes where you can highlight which trainings a certain employee has had. We have prepared our table with all the company employees, their start dates and the three trainings they should receive. The goal is to add all required checkboxes and highlight all employees that are not in line with the internal rule. Before we can insert the checkbox, we have to alter Excel's ribbon to include the developer tab. To do so, you navigate to File, Options and Customize Ribbon, or you can move your arrow to the ribbon, right click and select Customize the Ribbon. On the right side, you can check the box next to developer to make this tab appear in the ribbon. So we check the box and press OK. The developer tab is part of the ribbon now, as we need this to insert a checkbox. Now we are ready to insert the checkboxes. We do this with VBA code that creates them and a second code that will center them in their cells. First to open the macros, you navigate to the developer tab and then to Visual Basic. If you click on it, the VBA code opens. As you can see, we have already prepared the codes. All of the VBA codes that we use in this tutorial can be found in the description. Feel free to use and customize them as you please. The first code is called insert checkboxes. In this code, we allow the user to make a selection of cells in which he would like to create checkboxes. We go through the code now to show what will happen when we run this macro. First, we initialize all variables that we use in the code. We consider each cell of the selection that the user has to make, the entire section of cells and the checkboxes. Next, we let the user make a selection of cells. Finally, in each cell of our selection, a checkbox is created. We also set some features in order to make the checkboxes appear as we like. We choose the position, the height and width of the box to set the box nicely on the left side in the cell. In the next line, we link our checkbox to the cell it is positioned in and set it automatically to false, so that the checkbox is initially unchecked. By linking the checkboxes to corresponding cells, we make it possible to add some features to the workbook based on the values of the checkboxes. The final line for the checkbox appearance indicates that we don't require to name the box. Finally, we center the checkboxes in their cells to make them appear nicely on the sheet. The centering happens by calling the center checkboxes code that we prepared as well. This code will loop through all checkboxes, finds the current position of the checkbox and then alters its location using the checkbox dimensions. We now run the code by navigating to the macros button in the developer tab. Select the insert checkboxes and click on run. Now you can make the selection of cells in which you would like to make checkboxes appear. Click OK and you see that all checkboxes appear on the screen. First on the left side of each cell and then you are automatically centered. Remark that false appears in the cell which represents the fact that all boxes are initially unchecked. This gives a bit of a weird appearance so we navigate to the Home tab and select the color white for the text. As a final element we add some conclusion and conditional formatting based on the checkboxes values. This is done with the checkbox analysis code. We use a for loop to go over all employees, corresponding checkboxes, and then decide if the company's training rule is satisfied. As before, we start by initializing all variables we are going to use in the code. First, we have an integer i that will be used in the loop. Next, we have r1, a range containing all checkbox cells for one employee, and r2, the cell in which we will write our analysis output. Next we have the employee start date. Finally, you see the date that is mentioned in the company's rule, which is today minus six months, which we already computed on the Excel sheet using the today and edate function as you see here. Then we start the for loop. Here we go over each employee, compare its start date to the date defined in the company rule, and verify which checkboxes are checked. So first, after initializing the variables, we set them equal to their corresponding values. Then we verify if all checkboxes are checked or not. Then if one or more checkboxes are unchecked and the start date is more than six months ago, the employee is not in line with the rule, 
So here we write not OK. In all other cases, the rule is satisfied, so we write OK. When we have done that, we could run the code and then add conditional formatting in the Excel sheet by using the button in the Home tab. Another alternative is to add this to the VBA code, as we did here. So if not OK appears on the screen, we will color the cell's background light red and the text dark red. The RGB codes that you see correspond to the colors that are automatically used by the conditional formatting in Excel. When OK appears on the screen, we want a white background color for that cell with black text. Finally, we return to our Excel sheet and run the checkbox analysis code. As you can see, the conclusion OK or not OK and the conditional formatting appear on the screen. This concludes our video on Excel's ActiveX checkboxes in which we showed how you can easily create many checkboxes and how to analyze all of them quickly by making use of the linked cells and VBA codes. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch more Excel or software related tutorials. Questions or comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.